all things that proceed from you return to you sevenfold. For you have discovered yourself as the source. So there is no need to worry what you are going to get back in a particular transaction. There is only a need to worry about what you are going to give out. Life is about creating the highest quality of giving, not the highest quality of getting. You keep forgetting, but life is not forgetting. Life is forgiving. And in order to do that, you need to be forgiving to others, especially those who do not give to you what you thought you were going to get. This switch will entail a complete shift of your cultural story. Today, what you call success in your culture is measured largely by how much you get, by how much honor and money and power and possessions you amass. In the new culture, success will be measured by how much you cause others to amass. The irony will be that the more you cause others to amass, the more you will amass effortlessly. In the future economy, you will not do things for personal profit, but for personal growth, which will be your profit. Yet profit in material terms will come to you as you become a bigger and grander version of who you really are. So if another person does not keep an agreement, you will simply allow them to walk their path, make their choices, and create their own experience of themselves. And whatever they have not given you, you will not miss. For you will know that there is more where that came from. And that they are not the source of that, but you are. Who you are is love. What love is, is unlimited, eternal, and free. Therefore, that is what you are. This is the nature of who you are. You are unlimited, eternal, and free by nature. What do you suppose gave birth to your own country? Was it not give me liberty or give me death? Well, you've given up that liberty in your country and you've given it up in your lives and all for the same thing, security. You are so afraid to live, so afraid of life itself that you've given up the very nature of your being and trade for security. Create security from that which is inside you. But you have created a culture based on exclusion and supported it with the cultural myth of a God who excludes. Yet the culture of God is based on inclusion in God's love. Everyone is included into God's kingdom. Everyone is invited. And this truth is what you call a blasphemy. And you must, because if it is true, then everything you have created in your life is false. All human conventions and all human constructions are faulty to the degree that they are not unlimited, eternal, and free. My purpose is to decide and to declare, to create and to express, to experience and to fulfill who you really are, to recreate yourself anew in every moment in the grandest version of the greatest vision you ever had about who you really are. That is your purpose in becoming human, and that is the purpose of all life. Yet your basic instinct is not survival, but rather fairness, oneness, and love. This is the basic instinct of all sentient beings everywhere. It is in your cellular memory it is your inherent nature. Your instinct and nature is to reflect the essence of who you really are, which is fairness, oneness, and love. Looking at the social implications of this, it is important to understand the difference between fairness and equality. It is not a basic instinct of sentient beings to seek equality or to be equal. Indeed, exactly the opposite is true. 
The basic instinct of all living things is to express uniqueness, not sameness. Creating a society in which two beings are truly equal is not only impossible, but undesirable. Equality of opportunity is what is required. Not equality of fact produced by exterior forces and laws that would eliminate, not produce fairness. So what would create freedom of opportunity? Systems that would allow society to meet the basic survival needs of every individual, freeing all beings to pursue self-development and self-creation rather than self-survival. In other words, systems that imitate the true system called life in which survival is guaranteed. Remember that everything you do, you do for yourself. This is true because you and all others are one. What you do for another, you therefore do for you. And what you fail to do for another, you fail to do for you. What is good for another is good for you. What is bad for another is bad for you. This is the most basic truth. Yet it is the truth that you most frequently ignore. Now when you are in a relationship with another, that relationship has only one purpose. It exists as a vehicle for you to decide and to declare, to create and to express, to experience and to fulfill your highest notion of who you really are. Now if who you really are is a person who is kind and considerate, caring and sharing, compassionate and loving, then when you are being these things with others, you are giving yourself the grandest experience for which you came into this body. This is why you took a body, because only in the realm of relative could you know yourself as these things. In the realm of the absolute, from which you have come, this experience of knowing is impossible. Remember this. Everything in life depends on what you are seeking to be. If you seek to be love, you will do loving things with others. Not for others, but with others. Notice the difference. Catch the nuance. You will be doing loving things with others for yourself so that you can actualize and experience your grandest idea about yourself and who you really are. In this sense, it is impossible to do anything for another, for every act of your own volition is literally just that, an act. You are acting, that is, creating and playing a role, except you are not pretending you are actually being it. You are a human being and what you are being is decided and chosen by you. When you are true to yourself, when you do not betray yourself, then what it looks like you are giving, you will know you are actually receiving. You are literally giving yourself back to yourself. You cannot truly give to another for the simple reason that there is no other. If we are all one, then there is only you.